I'm Kevin Davis, and this is the Catholic Family Podcast, and next to me is a good friend of the show, Father Stephen McKenna. We thank him very much for coming on, and well, today we're not going to talk about philosophy, at least not exactly philosophy, maybe something that, that you know, people who, who like to think and like to learn might learn a little bit in this show, as I think we usually do, always do with Father McKenna. Um, and also apologies for my my camera. If you hear, hear any crashing, it's because I'm throwing my Sony SV1 camera out the window because it's terrible. Um, anyway, today, Father McKinnon and I are talking about courtship. Now, we've talked about this in the past. Um, I've had on Colleen Eldracker a couple of times to talk about the YAG in Cincinnati. And that's part of what Father and I want to talk about, but but actually not really. That's kind of the it's one of the things that brought this this topic to our attention. Um, also, because I, I had a stupid Facebook post that the father commented on with a with a great comment, and of course, father has to know by now. You got to be really careful. You make a great comment like that, I'm going, like, okay, father, podcast, you know, immediately. So, the father <laughs> was was nice enough to join us for a podcast to talk about courtship and and the issues thereof, you know, the morality of it, and and really, father, I think. You wanted to start with with really, I think the best place to start, and that is simply, when are you ready to start thinking about courtship? So, so Father, if you want to, I don't know where you want to begin with that, but I think that's a great place to start with this entire topic. Sure. Um, so, I think the couple of distinctions to be made are when somebody is interested in uh, in somebody of the opposite sex, obviously, and when. Uh, what and then the distinction from that and when somebody's ready to to court and then when somebody and then what the modern idea of dating is which should be rejected by every traditional catholic those three things are 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 essential to to sort of lay out so obviously somewhere after puberty when is when people start finding that natural attraction but that doesn't mean anybody is ready to court at that point in time what we mean by catholic courtship is uh, when you enter into a, a relationship that is moving towards the marriage vocation, that you are uh, that you are interacting with another person for the purpose of of uh, exploring the idea of if you are meant to be married to that person that that is the the goal of courtship is to ultimately end in matrimony now be the the general beginning aspect of it isn't even actually courtship but where you want to be is 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 starting off is is sort of interacting in in groups that that's the safest way to to do these things that that you meet somebody that you find that you find interesting and that you and that person don't immediately start just going out by yourselves, but to go out and do things with other groups of people, friend, mutual friends, um, uh, you know, uh, and and to do kind of group activities, go bowling or or uh, skating or go, you know, play a vo- game of volleyball or you know, go to a party and, and things like that. That's those are those are appropriate for for that beginning phase of it. And it, it, it's, and it's strange because it's contrary to what the modern world tells us to do is that you shouldn't jump in and immediately latch onto a single person and take it too seriously that, well, I, I'm really attracted to this person. So therefore I have to, I have to sort of, we have to be boyfriend and girlfriend and cut off all other avenues of opportunities and things like that. Again, the mindset t- is, is to, is to try and see where my vocation is in relation to matrimony. Who am I supposed to marry? And if I find the first pretty thing that smiles at me and I lock it down as, as I'm not allowed to talk to anybody else, then I might miss the, the bigger picture. Now, of course, that can't last forever because then, you know, then you'll never end up getting married if you're constantly, you know, checking to see if other pretty things smile at you. Um, but but to start off in the beginning, having that open mindedness of we're friends that we both understand we have this this mutual attraction to each other. And so we're just in the beginning phases. So we're not going to take it too, too seriously. Um, but we are definitely going to start talking and spending some time together um, in these safe um, environments of of uh, group activities. Here at St. Gertrude's, it's it's wonderful, and I know there's a, a number of other 
places that have proper parishes where these things are a little easier if the parish is bigger you have a lot of parochial activities going on and you know different things that everybody meets up at church and does you know different activities and things like that that's the obvious the the, the epitome of, of settings is the safest of safes and but then but even outside of that like i said you know if if somebody's having a, if one of your friends from one of your Catholic friends is having a, a cookout and they're having several other friends over and that you both end up there at the same time, that's that's always a good thing. Eventually, though, if if all seems to work out and it really seems, you know, hey, we should, we're ready after a little bit of time to 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 take this a little bit more seriously, then then you would sort of, as the as the common saying goes, sort of go steady, where it'd be that you know you exclusively courting you now you've entered into actual courtship where it is myself and this other person whom i am attracted to and thinking about possibly marrying that we get to know each other better get to start talking about uh common ideas in and and real ideas too not just you know what kind of movie do you like or what kind of ice cream is your favorite or what's your you know like do you like dogs or cats or anything like that i mean i mean of course you can talk about those things too but but don't be afraid to start talking about real things how do you see life going how do you what do you what do you what are expectations um what kind of um ideas do you have for um you know um even as it goes along, the closer to, to marriage that you get, um, you know, ideas about child uh, raising and, and discipline and education and all of those things. You start to talk about those things, not all at once, just but over time as you those are, the, you know, the purposes to get to know each other and 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 to start to understand, are we really compatible? Do we see eye to eye on a lot of the major things? Well, and, no. and real, if you don't mind, Father, I'd just love to comment real quickly because I think it's it's such a good point. My wife and I are talking about that today about this whole idea, right? This whole idea of of not just picking one person and attaching to them. And I think that's the way I kind of thought it through. Is like, okay, it's like really, if you think about it, it is for our vocation, right? So if it's that's my job, my my, my actual job on earth is my vocation, right? So that that is being a priest, that is being a you know a father, that is being whatever that is. So so it's not you know working as a fireman you know that, that's your job your vocation is being a father and if that's the case then shouldn't you be you know look at it as you're you're interviewing people for the job right you you want you want the best person possible to mm -hmm. to fit in this job and that the job that is literally to go along with you in this vocation to go to heaven and you're going to help them and they're going to help you and so it, it makes yes. sense absolutely that you're not just like oh there, there's a pretty face you know you know married you know here we go let's 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 make it happen it makes sense that you calmly say okay we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna think this through we're gonna not go too fast at this but then as you say too father you know again as you start weeding out the, the candidates i suppose or, or picking which you know the one that hey this this candidate looks good hey i think this is a candidate that can help me get to heaven and help me raise kids that can go right. to heaven then, then it makes sense yeah exactly and and it, it sounds funny to say it on the outright, just like weeding out candidates, as it were, you know, like, uh, my, um, as my, my dad would say, you know, like, the, you know, the, he would joke about, oh, I had to beat girls off with a stick when I was a boy, you know, like, it, it, you know, and, um, you know, it's, uh, um, you know, it's not like that it's that or it's not that you're, you're having some sort of like a, a competition where you're where you're snuffing out the, the, right. like the candle or something <laughs> like that. So, so you've been voted off the island or something. But it's um, but it's it's yeah, it is true that I mean, the whole world is a big place and there's a lot of people out there and you can't be sure just by the first person that you see that whole entire love at first sight. It's merely a feeling. It's not actually an indicator of anything. And sometimes it works out, but sometimes a lot of times it doesn't. And, you know, and um, and that's OK. That's perfectly fine when things don't work out. It just means it's sort of like somebody who goes to the seminary, right? If, if they go to the seminary and they don't make it through to the priesthood. Well, as you know, Bishop Sanborn used to say, uh, the seminary succeeds in every person it doesn't ordain, just as much as it does in every person it does I think it does ordain, because it is a, a a test of vocation. It's not 
you know, necessarily an aptitude test or a holiness test or something like that. The same thing in courtship. It's just because somebody enters into a courtship with somebody, it, it, you know, especially at the beginning, it's an exploratory phase. People shouldn't be weirded out by it or nervous about it or, you know, anything like that. It's just, you know, get to know somebody. You know, what, what harm is there in that? And if at the end, you know, it, it's not going to be right. It doesn't mean you have to be bitter or anything about that. You just, you, you know, you can be friendly and, and leave and, and still be, you know, the best of friends afterwards. There's um, there's plenty of examples of that, uh, you know, all around. The, in fact, the original startup of the YAG was in the 80s, the first edition of it. And there were many groups of people that ended up dating from that original YAG, which lasted just a few years. And then they ended up marrying other people from the same yag but it wasn't the ones they started off with and now those couples are are all friends mm. that you know two or three different couples that well you know this guy used to date this lady and the other guy used to date his wife and now they ended up in the end with each other because you know you you, you start off and it, it, i mean of course this there's nothing Nobody should be put off because somebody says that they're attracted to them or nobody should be put off by somebody wanting to get to know somebody. It's, all right, fine. You know, don't take it. Uh, and that's where, um, you know, that that kind of uh, beginning part where it is. Yeah, we'll, we'll go out with, with some friends and, and see how things go. You know, that's not that's not a bad. That's a good way to start. You're easing into the pool um, and without much in the way of, of pressure there. Um, and that's. And that's important. So, and Father, I would ask because I, much to the chagrin of my parents, who told me over and over not to, I started courtship. I suppose, yeah, it was it was courtship, and we were always. Oops, did I lose you, Father? Oh, I got you back. Yeah. Um, Phone call. It, it was, okay, no problem. Um, <laughs> so when I I started at 15 years old in a in a courtship, which of course is way 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 too young. I I had no possible way of, of obviously supporting a family. I was still in high school for, for years. To, in, in anyway, it ended up being kind of a disaster and, and it dragged on for years, et cetera. So I guess the question for you, Father, is, and I think it has to be a two-part question because it's different for, for men and women. So let's mm -hmm. say, let's start with men. What do you think is necessary for men to have for themselves to be ready to 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 look for a courtship or, or at least to be open you don't even have to even be looking for it but at least to be open yeah. for it and say okay actually this girl is attracted to me i'm attracted to her it's whatever i can actually do this rather than just be friends yes so it's necessary um to start like real courtship or, or you know to start in that we're in groups and we're having fun as friends and we get to know each other a little bit but it's nothing serious and nobody is tied down to one person or another you know there's you know it doesn't ha you know that can be that you know that's not a time sensitive thing because but the but when you to talk about courtship proper where where people are you know committed to to one person um that it's it's necessary that it be when they are ready or in the very near foreseeable future going to be ready to actually enter into matrimony because of the fact that courtship that spending time alone and uh or you know and, like one-on-one -on -one and, and, and talking and everything like that and getting to you know more close to somebody like that it carries with it what we call a necessary occasion of sin that you're attracted to that person they're attracted to you and so, and then you're going to spend time talking and interacting and getting to know each other better. Then there is going to be some temptation there because that's just natural. That's that's what's going to happen. And and it's necessary because it's leading to a true good. But to take that on when you're not ready for it, it can't be done. So so the general principle is for for boys and men and women is that you have to be basically ready to 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 be entering into the, the the married state now what does that mean for each one is a little different so for men that primarily comes down to um 
uh, um, basically to towards independence, uh, you know, financial and physical um, independence um, that 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 really is necessary. They need to have the primary duty of a ma- of the husband and the father is to be the breadwinner of the family, to work and to provide for the family and all of their needs. So you need to be able to have an occupation that not only uh, is enough to, you know, squeak by to get you ramen noodles and and um, and keep the lights on in your one bedroom apartment, but to be able to actually support, as I put it, you know, from the start, you need to think of you need something that's able to support you, your your sp- future spouse, and the potential of within nine months uh, another dependent to come along who needs all sorts of necessities and so if you're not in a position or not going to be soon in a position where you will be you know financially secure enough to you don't have to be rich you just have to be able to support a family and that you know like like i said that you're gonna be able to give them you know proper food and nutrients put a roof over their head clothing uh, transportation for what is necessary all of those things that you need to be able to be in a place um financially that that you can afford to do that and I, and as i said you with the prospect of nine months and and have a solid basis for that for that reality secondarily you need actual physical independence if you've never learned to live and do things by yourself um it's going to be uh impossible for you to be ready to enter into marriage as a, as a man you now that's not to say that you couldn't have been you know living at home but you need to have a self awareness to say you know have i been taught how to be independent you know to take care of myself to not you know to not be a grown child basically um and have i developed with some maturity to be able to look at it and say yeah i'm willing to 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 make sacrifices and i'm willing to to work hard and i'm willing to take on extra job if i need to just so if some things got hard or um take on responsibility and you you know i think i think that a lot of times uh, uh, you know, from growing up where, um, you know, that my, you know, at times when, when duty was ca- called for my, for my dad, like, you know, you'd have to work long hours and things. He was a, he was a tradesman, he was an electrician and he worked very hard. And then when the winter time came, he not only was doing that, but he would have to plow on top of it, you know? And, and so sometimes he, he would, uh, at times that he, that would be a, a reality and, and, that was fine, you know. What I mean, it, that he he might get no sleep and whatever, but he he was ready to go the next morning and plug along for work and you know sleep when he got the opportunity to because he had a family to feed and that was just gonna be it and no you know no use whining about it. It doesn't make any difference, and you can't just call out sick to to family life. So you know, and that's um we'll get into that a little bit later, but <clears throat> but it's but yeah, to have that self awareness for yourself that. You know, am I willing to? Am I ready to sacrifice? Do I have the skill sets necessary to be um, the man of the house, to work hard, to 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 be able to be conscious, to to have responsibility, to to take care of my own uh, things if I have to? You know, if you know, because even though you can say, well, we'll divide up duties, domestic, and you know, other things. Like if you if you can't do laundry. What are you gonna do if your if your wife gets sick? You know what I mean, like, you know, like, or I mean, or various other things that happen. Like, you can't just, you can't, you can't, you're not getting married to have a mom. You get, you're getting married to have a spouse. You gotta, you know, you gotta carry your own weight in that and and help out. So you could do some throw a load in every now and again too, and just to just to be handy. And also like, you know, like I said. Can you mow the lawn? Can you can you you know clean clean the gutters? Can you you know you, nobody expects everybody to be a to be a handyman. You don't have to be able to fix you know 
bro- leaky pipes are broken, but can you f- operate a, you know, a phone and call a plumber to do so because you, or are you just going to ignore the leak coming from the ceiling because you, you, it's sort of like that immature lookout towards it of like, well, maybe they'll just go away, you know, or something like that. And uh, which is actually all too common. And um, so just having that self-awareness, but really that independence, can you live on your own, you know, young men that any young man when they once they get out uh, once they have the ability to they really should move out of home and force that up upon themselves either get a get a room with an with a get a roommate and and rent a place if if you know to start off costs are difficult you know live with a roommate that's fine or if you can live on your own but but get a sense of independence and and self-reliance that you that they're you know that nobody's coming to help you if something goes wrong and um and that's important uh for that for that aspect now um for ladies i think there tends to be um in actuality a readiness for for courtship sooner than a lot of gentlemen just because of how society is geared now you know you everybody's expected to at least graduate high school then oftentimes for men they have to go to some sort of trade school or maybe some of them go to college or um, you know learn some sort of set of skills that is going to actually be able to pay the bills and not uh, just something where it's uh, you know, to get to get an occupation, not a job, basically, you know, a job is something that you can do for the summertime while you're on, sp- sp- on school break. Uh, an occupation is something that you can do that that uh, for a long period of time to come with a outlook of potential growth and and, and ability to support a family. Um, the for for women, it's not oftentimes that it takes all that long. It's a really the question is maturity enough enough maturity to um, to again be away from from their family and to to start a new family uh, and to be have enough maturity to look after people that are dependent upon you um, uh, to you know to to do your duty at, at home without uh, being asked or having to be watched over to just be self reliant in those things and then also again if it, if a child comes along the way soon after being married. Well, you know, now you have a real responsibility on your hand that you can't get back. So are you uh, ready to nobody feels ready to become a parent? You you can attest to that. I'm sure, Kevin, that nobody actually feels ready. But but just honestly, you know, can can are you a fairly responsible person that that you can that you know that, OK, I'll just do what I have to do and it, 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 we'll figure it out as we go along and it'll, it'll work. Uh, Secondarily, I think is the aspect of um, they need to have like men have to have their what they need for being able to have gainful employment for for the that relationship. So they should they need to be out of college. They need to be uh, out of their you know if not out of their trade school at least working with sufficient income while they're going to learn a trade or, you know, do these type of things. Uh, for women, it's the same thing. What is your occupation going to be? Your occupation is going to be domestic. And so therefore you need to have the skill sets that is required to run a domicile. You need to be able to sew and to, to clean and, and cook and to, um, to uh, manage uh, you know, the things around the house to, to be able to balance, you know, checkbook and ensure the bills are paid on time and organize things. And, and, and but father, are... I, I see our podcast losing listeners as, as you're speaking. <laughs> I, 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 I like how you're saying this so nonchalantly. This is a very touchy topic and I, I'm totally agreeing with you, but, but I mean, I mean, so, so to be clear, what is a, what is a, a woman's vocation who is, who is, getting married i mean i think that's a really it's a really big question i think in this whole topic right and as you said it is you know domestic and I, but i think that that is that is absolutely not a given even in trad circles and, yeah. and sometimes it doesn't work but of course as we know sometimes women unfortunately maybe they have to work it so that's the sometimes there's exceptions but what what's the ideal father? i think the exception is just that though i think the exception is exceptional 
Um, I think in rea in reality, and I think while people can write me angry emails after this if they want to, <laughs> but I honestly believe that um, in the in almost in most cases, uh, women continuing to work is by choice and and with an excuse found so you know that there can you always be making more money to make life more comfortable sure you can can you always um uh, you know uh is there all do you always have a a skill set that you feel is being underappreciated of course you know but i think truly um you know that really realistically speaking I think employment prior to courtship or prior to marriage by women should be based on things that they can do and walk away from. You need to do something that you can walk away from. If you want to to teach at your local Catholic school or something like that, great. We got you for a few years and then when you get married, we know we're going to have to replace you someday. You know, if you want to do um you know like uh do some cleaning or do you know get a job um uh, you know doing photography for on your own or whatever those type of things fine because you can stop at any point in time but these the, the idea that of most ladies going out and getting you know like advanced nursing degrees and things like that it's a waste of time if you're wanting to become if you're wanting to look for your vocation in life and i'm and i'm sorry that i know that's going to offend people because because ladies you you do tend to get very sensitive especially if you are in the nursing profession because you know the world you um, know you know always tells you that that you're heroes and um you know i don't think that anybody discredits the importance of having nurses out there but when we look at the history of nursing, what was it largely down to? It was down to single people and nuns that used and to be, be nurses because they weren't tied down in matrimony. And so to go spend a hundred thousand dollars of, you know, take on a hundred thousand dollar debt that somebody's going to have to pay off. So you can be a nurse for a year and a half and then to walk away from that, that's a hard pill to swallow. And so you feel like you have to, and I think that's oftentimes the case. People feel like they have to justify the investment they've put into, into gaining that, that, sure. that skill set and that trait. So it might not even be this modern, um, this modernist uh, women's liberation type of mentality. It might be more so just, I've spent so much money and spent so much time getting to this point. How am I going to walk away now? Well, you know, the, the problem is, is that you spent so much money and so much time. And I get it. Some people like myself, you know, we grow up in the world and we didn't have a traditional Catholic foundation to start off with. And everybody's told that they have to go to college and get educations and all of these things. And um, and so you might have taken that on. All right, fine. But you have to now that you are here, you're a traditional Catholic, you have to look at it from the perspective of, all right, well, nothing is 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 uh, is worth sacrificing my vocation from God from. So even if I become a doctor, that's worthwhile for for me if I, if or if if it's a, sorry if, for a woman to walk away from to say, you know, oh, I I spent ten years becoming a, a doctor, and but now I found the person that I'm supposed to marry. So I'm going to leave that practice behind, uh, you know, or a man in the same boat. If I, if I had actually followed through with what my original plan was and had gone in as a uh, pre-med student into college and continued that all the way through until I became a medical doctor. And then I still felt called to the priesthood. I would have to be able to walk away from that and, right. um, and be willing to do so. Um, and um you know i think a lot of people realize that a little bit more so with with the with 2020 you know that all of a sudden those those vocations those occupations sorry um became secondary to their real vocation you know that a lot of people out there um uh, was very admirable a lot of a lot of lay people who were married and had families and were willing to put their their occupation on the line 
and say, I'm, I'm not taking this, this, you know, uh, cytotoxic, uh, injection, um, because it's more important that I'm physically here for my, for my kids and my wife than it is for me to be able to, to cling on to whatever I went to school for or whatever thing I, I, you know, was making money on. I'm fine. I'll, I'll go be a trash man. That's fine. I, I don't, it doesn't matter as long as I can put food on the table. That's all that, that's all that I care about. And that's, so I think that some people have started to, you know, with that, it's necessitated a, a sort of reevaluation of priorities, but still we're not, we're far from perfect in that. And I still see way too many ladies, you know, immediately just finishing high school and going off into college to try to get these advanced degrees for what, if you're going, you, most people are called to the married state. So you're either merely delaying it for your own pursuit of, you know, personal gratification or in which case you could miss what god god is calling you to you you put that at risk or you are taking on something that is going to be very difficult to walk away from at that time because we have to recognize the division uh that is supposed to be there in that in that vocation it is men are supposed to be the ones that are out working and to and women are supposed to be the ones who take care of the domicile and also um rear the children on a day-to-day -day basis you know it's you know men have that macro view to the to the to the overseeing of the of the family but on a micro scale every single day especially when kids come along that is the woman's domain that they are to, to to teach them and to 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 correct them and to uh you know take care of them in all of those various aspects that's that's what they're meant to to do and so um and so that has to be a conscious thing beforehand if, if you feel the call to to in any way shape or form towards matrimony don't Go on taking on those things. And if you feel a call to the religious life, guess what? No religious community is going to take you if you have $100,000 worth of debt. So it's not worth it. You know, it really is. And the, and um, so it's uh, it really is something that um, uh, it just is not uh, um, something that we we need to be to be focused on these days um and i'm sorry to to like you said i can see the viewership <laughs> dwindling down it seems angry very, face very, angry face angry yeah right very very male heavy now as, as a viewership don't worry guys you're gonna get yours in a minute or two <laughs> right exactly so it's, so it's uh so well, well, it's, I, I, well one last question on this topic father i know we've kind of gone long on it already but i mean so so would you say then which I think this is what you're saying that 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 ladies should be, even from a young age, then more focused on what is likely their vocation than on mm -hmm. any sort of career. Because I think that's the ultimate question, right? I mean, I think that's the ultimate question, though. It really simply boils down to: should yeah. they be should they be focused on I need I need to find this job or I need to go to study for this or this, or should they be saying no? I my I hope I'm praying that my vocation is marriage, or you know that's what I, that's you know likely what it is. And that's actually their focus in doing the best they can to to make that work, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. Because you are gaining the skills that are going to make you not only capable of fulfilling your vocation, but also attractive to somebody who's looking for somebody for, to fill that spot for their vocation. If I'm if I'm looking, if I'm pretend I'm not a priest, if I'm just if I'm just you, you, Joe Schmo. And I am seriously looking for a wife. I am not going to, I mean, that is going to factor in. If I see the young lady who is there and, and clearly uh, fulfills that, that, that feminine role very well and, and you, you know, is, guess what, ladies? I can't so, I, I, I shouldn't say that. I can sew a button back onto a shirt, but it's not going to stay for a great time because I'm not very good at it. And it's going to take me a long time and I'm going to draw blood at some point along the way. <laughs> so it, all of those things combined, it's, it's going to be that, uh, you know, that if you can, if all of a sudden a button falls off my shirt or my coat or something like that, and you're like, Oh, do you want me to fix that for you? You've already, you know, pay, you know, 
you've gone up in the in the in the in the intrigue factor like hmm yeah i would you know like that that would be good to see you know like that would be very handy for 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 you to, to you know not that you have to be going around with like thread and needle everywhere to to but just knowing that it comes off almost without having to try that yeah. it, the way you carry yourself the way you the the those those you know the what the things that you you do during your day-to-day life eventually sort of gets known and if those things if it comes clear that oh yeah you can cook and you can do these things or whatever then all of a sudden you know that's going to draw attention in to it's only one aspect but it certainly is an important aspect and and you know and then there is the argument on the other side of that that okay a lot of like people that grow up as trads actually you know finish high school or even before they finish high school basically kind of having that skill set ready to go you know if it's uh uh if they've been raised in a real trad family and that's wonderful and so that's not to say that you can't you know, you're not going to be turn 18 and then all of a sudden be married and on your way like instantaneously. That doesn't happen either all the time. And so you might have to take a job and you might have to do other things. And and sometimes you might even have to to to, you know, it might be beneficial to go get, you know, like a, a two year degree from a junior college where you're just getting like a business administration type of aspect so you could well it's been a few years and i haven't you know gotten any prospects and uh i'm from a small you know area so it might take a little longer so i might put myself in a place where i can start a business now so i can support myself and have a little nest egg and things like that and then when you know uh uh prince charming comes along then i can you know i can use it's my own thing i can stop whenever i want to hey those those you know it weighing those things out is is fine it's not to say that you don't work if that's not the case at all it's to say that it's something that you know it's it's something to be viewed as you know as a uh, placeholder for a while or to be serving a real purpose um and i uh you know that uh, that is that that mainstay and yeah if um so i think that you know anybody with that prospect of mind of 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 matrimony uh, i don't think it behooves anybody to really um to to go down that route plus again most of the time you end up just having a giant debt that the person who is looking to court you now has to wonder do i want to take on to pay or not you know and um you know i mean imagine that if i if if uh you have a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt and then i come along i'm like ah you know this is really, in, you know, I found you very interesting. It's like, do you find me a hundred thousand dollars interesting? Because that's the price to get through the door, you know. And that's, uh, and, that's and you got yeah. And people, you know, well, that's a lot of money to pay off over time. And um, so, um, you know. Well, and, and I think I think too, Father. Sorry, um, I, and I think that it's it's important to say that. I think there are women out there. I'm sure shaking their heads and saying, "Oh, you know, they're just disrespecting us or something." But but I think it's really clear as as a husband and a father that as a woman you 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 bear children you give birth to children you raise children that 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 should be honored and that should be honored above anything else you can do in this stupid job world i, I mean i think that's this right. is the crazy thing that the world and the devil has tricked us into this belief that your your success is measured on what you do in the in 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 a career and since when, why? <laughs> I mean, for a yeah. woman, I mean, why would a, I mean, that, that's not how it is. And that's not, that shouldn't be like that for men. Maybe what you contribute to society, but certainly sure. not, not what your job is. I mean, I mean, how well you do your job, how hard you work, how well you support your family. But this entire idea is, it's, it's a, it's a modern idea and it's, and it's probably part of, of modernism. I mean, for it that is. matter, it, it's, it's, it's ugly. It is very, it very much is. And um and we have to recognize ourselves how much we don't realize that we're imbued with that modern mentality without recognizing even if you've been raised from the womb you know you are cradle catholic you know drag catholic the world is so surrounding us with so much you know information and 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 pressure we have to recognize that we're not immune to those things all of a sudden, our scale of judgment becomes a little bit of a sliding scale rather than a more concrete scale, whether it's morality, whether it's 
propriety or whether it's um, uh, responsibility and uh, and and in this case whether whether it's it's actual duty of, of state and um, yeah it's it, nobody should look at being told your vocation is domestic as being a letdown you know if you feel that when you're told oh your vocation is 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 a domestic one if you feel kind of like this kind of like oh boy that's that's a bummer type of feeling you have to even if it's just a small feeling you have to check yourself to realize that 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 is that is modernism in like affecting you you, you, it should be an exciting prospect because of all the joys that come with it. You, and it's oftentimes more joyful than you uh, imagine going into it. Not to say that it's not without its crosses and hardships. It certainly is. There's no vocation that doesn't have a cross. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, uh, you know, my mother talked about how, you know, when I was, for, again, so for listeners, I didn't grow up traditional Catholic, but, you know, my mom... <clears throat> when I was first born, I'm the oldest, um, she worked for a, a short period of time because she had been working before I was born and she continued on. And um, shortly, a little while afterwards, she stopped. And, she's, and it was, you know, needed that she just stay home and take care of me and then my brother to come and things like that. And she will tell you that they were the happiest days of her entire life. You know, that those were the happiest days of her whole life when she was home just taking care of us. And that that was her world with her little domain was the house. And so, you know, so you are, it is meant to be one with many wonderful rewards to it. In addition to the, the work that actually goes into it, you know, it's, I mean, Kevin, you're, you're a dad. I mean, the, when you're, you know, at work and you're spending hours, you know, slaving away, trying to do whatever you've got to do, and you're surrounded by worldlings and things like that. How much do you want to be home with your kids and your sp and your wife? Like, how much? How many times do you think, "Oh man, I can't wait to get home." Like, this is this is just a slog today. It all the time, you know. It's that you know the home should be a joy, and that should be, uh, you know, that is your little sort of like, you know, safe place, your castle, and and it is a good wife that makes it that way, and it is. Uh, kids that brighten that that light up and it's and it's uh and it's a real um it's a real benefit a real bright spot in a in a in a marriage for a woman's vocation uh if she embraces it or does it well like that's is very fulfilling and so um so but it's but we have to recognize that it's a mindset that is affected by the modern world and then that's not to say that you're a like if you're a woman and you're kind of coming to that realization, who have been, you know, nipped by the modernism bug, like don't think of yourself as bad. It's like I said, it, we're all none of us are immune to it. It's just it's just recognizing for what it is and trying to to, to counteract it and say, oh, okay, I'm going to embrace the challenge to 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 try to be feminine, to to be to be um, to embrace my, my my calling in life as to what I am, you know, that I am. I am a woman. There's a lot to be uh, very, you know, thankful for in the, in that in that aspect of of life. And so, um, so yeah, that's um, you know, that's it is a fight against modern society. And um, just as much as, like I said, there's plenty of aspects on the men's side too that you know we we have to fight against that are modern influences. Be, being being grown ups, but I think that's father that the one that I see the most is the modern yes. mentality of of I don't I don't need to grow up I don't need to be an adult I don't need to accept responsibilities, and even when they're I've seen this you know with men who are even fathers unfortunately, and they think okay I'll, I'll at least do my job I'll go I'll go work but then they actually don't want to have the home life they don't want to help with the kids and I think that I think it is again if there's anything that I've seen is this is this lack of the ability to literally just grow up to to say this is my vocation now and it's going to be yeah. hard and i'm going to do it and i'm going to find the joy that is in it and i think i think that's a it's a that's a detriment for sure of the modern society for sure absolutely and and for men that's a has to be a, a realization that if you want to be a married man it doesn't stop with you know punching out on the on the clock at nine o'clock at uh, five o'clock you know it, it begins 
<laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Your work, your work part of the day, while it is probably the more grueling aspect of it, and the part that you look to go home to, because there's more. You have a financial reward from work, but you have a an actual like you know purposeful reward in in the home life. In reality, when you step through that door in the evening, now is the most important work of the day that you're going to do. You know, you have to 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 help out your 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 spouse to make sure that you express that she is loved and appreciated and and all of those types of things. You have to look to your children and take interest in in they, what they want to do. You have to go out and play with them. You have to 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 listen to them sing the new song that they learned in school that sounds like nails on a chalkboard. But you know, you have to you have to pretend that you're happy to hear them learning to play the recorder you know, i mean it's you all of these things you whatever interest they, they find that you think is just boring you have to be interested in wholeheartedly you every movie that they watch you have to have watched beforehand to make sure that it's clean and decent and there's no hidden aspects to it that you didn't know every you know every every book that they read somebody has to go through you are responsible for all of these things and so much more that if you think you can come home and just put your feet up then you're failing that's not how it works you need to be part of that home life and uh, for the time that you're there be be a part of it and and be a, a help um i think from both aspects of it, the number one thing that I say in any marriage class that I do for marriage prep is that the if you want to find out when problems start in a marriage, it's when one of the two spouses starts to think self selfishly. If they if their first priority and first mindset is what does my spouse need and what does what do my kids need before any concern of my own if it's self-sacrificing and it's and it's one that is constantly giving uh, of itself without expectation of something in return as a as a, you know in that regard like a true selflessness if both people have that mentality then there are going to be a lot of good days in a marriage if if one or both start thinking about what they can gain out of it then it becomes really truly problematic um and so uh so uh, as a gen generic aspect that is really really um part of that so you know so for we were talking about the uh, the ladies and domestic life that whole entire idea a lot of it is is self-sacrificing it's you know, no, there's nothing dynamic about sweeping the floor or doing a load of laundry or something like that. That's it's oftentimes mundane and it's repetitive and it's. Uh, but you know, but in those things, those are the things that, you know, like Saint Therese of the Zoo in the convent embraced those little things to do perfectly as a gift to God and made her a saint. So, in your vocation, those are the things that you're called to do. So while they might be mundane and they might be if you offer them well and do them to the best of your ability, they are that that those are literally parts of the puzzle that are going to to make you a saint. If you look at your vocation as this is how I get to heaven by doing my vocation well, then all of those things all of a sudden take on a new light to them and a new purpose. Um, and so so that's really important. But we will move on from the, the the ladies the detriments in a just one second because I, I wanted to point out one little thing that is not so much um what um you know vocation based but more of a difficulty in regards to um um or i guess it's two two pieces real quick that are regards to what may make it difficult to find your potential spouse um for a young lady um one is uh and it's sort of like almost two ends of the spectrum one is if you have a mentality that is so we talk about ma uh, this masculine influence on on society 
well, if you have a um, truly m masculine personality where you're, it's a sort of domineering aspect where you, you know, you have a very strong will and you have a very strong um, sense of like the way things need to be. If you're, if you're a lady and you tend to be very type A personality, it's not to say that you can't find a spouse it's far from it it's just and you have to be self-conscious of the that aspect is something that if a man is supposed knows he's supposed to be the head of the household he's not going to want to compete for that position and so you have to just be self-aware of those things try to 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 work on being feminine in that approach and also being you know making it you know clear that that uh, you know i need to 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 sort of um to to be be conscious of of that reality on the flip side of it is if not the the truly uh super organized but on the reverse is the the very immature aspect that um girls can prolong an immaturity which makes it difficult or really undesirable for for men to ask them into situations of courtship this a lot of times takes place in girls girls tend to be very clicky that they sit around in groups and they talk with each other that's fine but if your group is constantly walking away from where guys are and just keeping a distance well guess what don't be surprised when nobody comes up and talks to you because you've distanced yourself with these group of ladies and that's made it you know I'm, you know i might think you're pretty but I'm not going to chase across the parking lot for you if you keep running around in circles and just trying to to stay with your your girlfriends all the time. That just isn't going to work. If you if you st at least stay in one place, then all right, maybe I can try to crack in through the through the through the eggshell here. But oh, you know, well, like it, it, it's like my original Facebook post, Father, right? Where I where I said, you know, if you want your knight in shining armor to pick up your handkerchief, you have to drop it first. And I think that that's exactly. it's like what you're saying. I mean, it's exactly that you have to at least give some something yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you, you don't have to be like you don't have to give a wink you know but just like hey literally be available to mm -hmm. to someone to talk to I mean, I mean and i think that's that's such a valuable thing for for ladies to know that okay if you're not interested in being married then okay fine then go go with your gal friends and go on a hike yeah. but if you do want to get married and it, that's at least in, in your mind somewhere then you, you have to make it at least possible for men to talk yeah. to you right and be approachable about it too. That if somebody comes over, don't you know, do that kind of like mean girl thing where you all look at each other like, mm, you know, and kind of like, you know, like uh, who is this coming interrupting our conversation? You know, like that's, you know, it probably took a little bit of gumption for the guy to get to get up the nerve to go over and just introduce himself or start talking totally. to you guys. You know, so be appreciative of the effort. You know that, hey, okay, you know. Whatever would you know? Even if it's not really an interest, there be 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 at least politely appreciative in that regard uh, and approachable. But on the flip side of that, and with that, along with that is, um, you know, the the kind of goes along w with that aspect of immaturity is is don't play the girl games. Don't lead a guy on. You know, there's too many times the guy thinks like, oh boy, this girl really likes me because you know, it's, and you, he's being strung along. For thinking that there's a future in this thing, just you know, if you if you don't like the fish, toss them back into the sea. Like it's okay if you keep him out of the water for too long, he's gonna he's gonna flop around until he dies, and he's gonna <laughs> lose all hope in any kind of way of ever landing himself a, a, a wife because you killed him on the deck of the boat. Like just toss them back if it's it's okay don't be mean about it be very nice about it but if you know in you know but if it starts to become apparent that it's more than just like okay we're going to hang around in a group of friends and this guy's really kind of interested just tell him and say listen i'm interested in somebody else or you know i i think you're a great guy but you're not my type and i'm not you know i don't take this the wrong way i want you to find the right person i just don't think that person's me and that's okay you know uh, it stings a little bit but it's way better in the beginning than it is if it you drag him along for a long time and then he thinks that he's 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 thinking about going to pick out a ring and you're looking for the exit somehow you know and do it to his face don't send him a text message don't you know be an adult you know if you're if you're supposed to be an adult act like an adult pull him aside don't do it in front of a bunch of your friends don't have a friend do it for you pull him aside and tell it to him nicely and just you know be very be very you know say something nice 
about you know that he that he has a lot to offer but just it's just not for you you know and that and that's fine but well, and, and, and father i i think i see i see it in society i think this is another modern issue where people are are afraid of committing and i, I mean to anything and, and i've seen it when when i when i host a party or i i i uh you know barbecue or do a pilgrimage people take a long time to to respond and I even kind of talked to people about this before. And I think part of it is because someone actually, I think someone literally said, well, I don't know if something else might come up. <laughs> and I was like, like, Ouch. <laughs> whoa, you know? Yeah, exactly. But that's exactly, and I think people really think like that. <clears throat> Maybe it's yeah. just my, it may just be my parties. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, but, but, but it's like, you know, I think the idea of, well, you know, maybe, you know, I mean, it's like not just like committing to yes or no, you know, is this going to work or is it not? And I think that that's a, and I know that's a difficult thing because you also don't want to give up on someone in the first meeting. And I understand it, it is a difficult game, you know, not a yeah. game. It's a difficult yeah, yeah. thing to understand it to play. But, but I think again, don't, don't, yeah, as you said, father, don't, don't pull things along just because you're, you're not willing to commit and committing to say no. It's, it's exactly. And that's, and that's no, a, yes. And it's a good point that you make, because you said you don't want to say no from the outright to like squash any possibility before it even gets going, which is why, again, the beginning part of, before courtship where you spend time as like as friends in a if everybody has that mentality like yeah we'll get together at you know kevin's house for a barbecue we'll all respond to his rsvp about it and then you know we show up and there's a group of us then i can get to know you and or you know you know girl a that and she can get to know me and then she can make an actual decision like listen i you know we we We've been around, we got to know each other. I just don't think this is for us. Don't just do it because I come up and I have a little bit of a gimpy leg or something like that. You know what I mean? Like just like don't just, you know, don't don't uh you know, don't toss somebody off for making an effort to just, you know, introduce himself either. But yeah, you know, let, it is a it is a balance to find. Give somebody a chance. But um, but don't but don't drag them along once you've realized that oh, this is just not gonna work. And well, um I Sorry, but I, I gotta go off on a tangent real quickly because this is something I think it's also really important. I, I have I have buddies who are, are like this, and, and I think I've seen it with girls too. Is this whole mentality of I have a type? Now, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. If the type means I, I like someone who is virtuous and Catholic, and you know, okay, of course. But the type being, hey, I have a type of what someone looks like, and that's the only. Pr that's so absurdly stupid that it blows my mind it's just like i can't even believe it because like you do you realize that you could be shutting off i mean yes. you are you are shutting off an entire group of maybe in a, a huge group of people and very very possibly the person you're actually supposed to marry it's and how, and how incredibly shallow is that if your judgment is based purely on looks alone now you know again you know as you know, there should be some aspect of some level of physical attraction there. Yeah. But you can find people to be very beautiful when you get to know them and you get to see the shining attributes of if somebody is an, uh, an uh, incredibly um, uh, virtuous person that has a lot of, you know, good attributes about them, they might not be the person off of the magazine page. Nobody is, first and foremost. And then secondarily, even if they are the person off the page of the magazine, that lasts for a year or two. So it better be deeper than just looks alone. You know, like it's going to go away and go away very quickly. You know, it's such a, a silly thing to be the number one parameter for. Yes, there needs to be some level of attraction, but it's but it is it only gets you your foot in the door. It doesn't it doesn't go beyond much more than that. You know, if if she's going to burn every single meal that she ever makes because she she can't, you know, turn on an oven, you're going to have a lot of lean years, my friend. But, uh, you know, hopefully I hope you can eat pretty pictures, you know, like that's that's going to be, you know, that's going to be uh, really difficult. And uh, or, you know, uh, it's it's it just has to be it's only one piece to the puzzle physical attraction is is a piece but it is just merely one piece to the puzzle and it is something that that you realize like i said if you get to know somebody and take the time to learn to meet somebody that's actually very virtuous that what starts off as the first thing to draw your interest fades to the background as 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 importance as you get to actually know 
a person. And um, yeah, and that's and that's and, yeah, having a type. Yeah, your your type should be. There's a couple of typologies. Like it, your type should be Catholic. You know, the opposite sex, and you know, um, preferably somebody who is uh, somewhere in the near ballpark as to, um, you know, to to trying to to work on a spiritual life as as I am. You know, like kind of focused on, you know, putting prioritizing the faith, not only being Catholic but actually living a Catholic life. Those are like those are your three types. Outside of that, hey. You know, be open, be open minded to some to, to what may come up, come down the pike. It's OK. Um, and, you know, these things, you know, much, you know, are you, are you going to want to have that really? Are you going to want to answer the call from God? Or are you going to want to, um, you know, have the, the have everything based on how good it looks on your on your your Facebook page when you're standing next to the person you're married to? Like, which is more important to you? So that's well, and I have to say we're already at an hour, Father. This, this is unbelievable. And I, I don't know if we've gotten to half of what I want to talk about it. it it's just crazy. It's, it's always like this with you, Father. It's, it's terrible. It's like we're, our, our podcasts are always too long. Uh, in a good, in all the best ways. Um, but you just said something that I have to bring up because it's really an important question, and that is the idea of a Catholic or non-Catholic spouse. Because I think again, I know it's a little off topic, and I know I'm kind of I'm kind of verging, but I think that's such a such an important question because mm-hmm. you know I, people would ask, okay, should I only look for a Catholic spouse? Should, I mean, what if what if there aren't Catholics in my country? You know, I, I've literally had people say that to me. We don't have, we don't have enough Catholics. Where am I going to find them? And obviously, these are extreme situations. But but what would be your answer, Father, to, Father, to that? I mean, how important is it to find a Catholic spouse and not just a Catholic in name? Yeah, um, I could probably answer it in the most plain of ways, and that is to say, a mixed marriage is never God's will. Is not it is not part of God's will to have a mixed marriage. So it is merely something that, in certain circumstances, that may be tolerated for a greater good in Catholic society. But it is never the will of God, and it is never the the will of the Church to have a mixed marriage. So that is probably the most straightforward part. If you're looking for, at it as a vocation. And you're going to, and you're looking at, you know, only at non-Catholics, then you are automatically, um, you're automatically looking in the wrong direction. You know that you're not going to find God's will there. Now, that being said, we understand that it's difficult at times to find other traditional Catholics out there, and there have been many cases where a Protestant has met somebody that is a traditional Catholic and they've worked with them and they've become converts and they've become really strong, very good Catholics, like sincere conversion, wholesale buying in, even becoming better Catholics than the, than the, the, the born Catholic spouse, you know, in the end and everything like that. Those things can happen and that can be God's will. But if you, but it, those type of things should be gone into hesitatingly and it should be looked at as like this is this is my uh, my line in the sand, you know that that I'm not going to enter into a mixed marriage. So I can present this idea and try to attract somebody to a faith, but if eventually then it's clear they're not going to come along, then I need to I need to cut bait and walk away. You know that that's that if why why compromise on the very most important aspect? Of a relationship. If you're not united in faith, then what are you united in? You know, in favorite color. I mean, come. I mean, let's let's be serious here. It's. Right. I mean, you know, like you really aren't united. It has to be a, a true significant unity, which is based in in the faith. And I will tell you, and you know that there isn't an example out there that I've ever seen of somebody who's traditional Catholic that has been in a, a mixed marriage that hasn't had that be an actual problem somewhere along the lines. And it's pr- most often the ones who find it the most problematic are the children. Because 
you know, they sit there and go, well, why do I have to stay still and pray the rosary? Dad doesn't have to, or mom doesn't have to. And guess what? All of a sudden, their faith is watered down without you even the, the the Catholic spouse could do all of the things right. Do you know? I mean, the non-Catholic spouse could do all of the things right. He could, you know, get completely remove himself from from um, preventing your you educating the children as Catholic. He could be completely supportive of all of the the endeavors to be done. But if it's not lived by the other person, kids aren't stupid. They're they're gonna re- realize that. And what have you done? They love their their father or they love their mother that's not Catholic. You, you're going to tell them that, you know, like where it matters the most, they're wrong and they're in danger of, of losing their soul. And, you know, what do you think kind of they or are you going to say, you know, it's you, either you damage the respect that they have for the person in the natural order of things or you damage the respect that they have for the ultimate veracity of the faith and oftentimes both of those things get damaged when you have a mixed marriage and and so um yeah it's don't don't put your chips into that basket like i said if you happen to meet somebody that you found at work and they're really amenable to to conversion and it works out then then fantastic then that's then that's something but if you're going out there like on the protestant wife hunt or the protestant husband hunt um you're looking into the wrong bushes you know like that's not you're not going to have the high probability of success there which is why is exactly why we do something like the egg you know we recognize a lot of people come from missions or small chapels and it's a small pool to choose from come here last year we had over a hundred people at the egg we've increased the number every single year the whole entire purpose of it is so you can meet other young adult Catholics from all over the place and realize that there's more of you out there. It's not, there's no pressure for, for, for courtship. Courtship is just one of those things that can happen from it. You know, that people need to be open to the fact that that could be a reality. It's more so for Catholic networking and friendship than anything else. And yeah, you might find a spouse out of it, but even if you're not ready to court, doesn't matter still come and make some friends you know come have a good time realize that you're not alone in the world and that's a that's a good thing and that's okay um so there's there's that aspect of it that is is really important um but yeah mixed marriages is like i said the, the most straightforward way i could put it is that it is not god's will and so like that's if you if you take something home with you that's that's that it's you know it is contrary to the will of god to think oh well, if he doesn't convert then i'll just get a mixed marriage no and and i'm here to tell you that unless there are extenuating circumstances a, a lot of times we'll tell you no i won't i'm not just going to marry you because you you fell in love with tommy the protestant you know like or or Susie the the methodist like no i don't care you know like that's you're not going to get married here you know and then yeah if there's if somebody is superannuated or there are, you know, other extenuating circumstances that go into it, all right, maybe we can talk, but we're still going to, you know, at least require some, some, uh, some good uh, um, cooperation moving forward in that way. Awesome. Thank you, Father. But, but definitely a, a good response. <clears throat> Excuse me. Boy, sorry if I blasted your ears again. Um, so, Father, I, I think the best way to do this, we, we already, we also want to talk about the morality of courtship. I think it's maybe even best to say that for another show. Sure. Um, so, I think what I want to ask you, Father, to to wrap this up because I think I think we covered so much that that it's um it's already a fantastic podcast. But I think I'd like to ask you. So, the the people who, you know, how do, how do I phrase this? I guess you you kind of you kind of just answered it really. I mean, I guess the, I know that people struggle with the idea of, of going to, to the ag and there are different, different issues from it. I mean, because maybe because they're, they're shy or because they, they, they think it's a waste of time or it's, it's awkward. I mean, what, what is your, what's your suggestion to the people who, who are, who are hesitating or who think, Hey, you know, maybe this isn't for me. Well, I mean, I'm hardly, I'm barely able to be even considered a young adult anymore. Um, and the, and I am certainly not looking for a spouse or looking to make friends, but I'm there as the, as the, 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 the chaplain for it. 
and I have a good time at the at the ag. So I can guarantee you, you're going to come and have fun. So first and foremost, you know, who doesn't like a good time? Secondarily, you you know, it is the primary purpose of it is to meet other traditional Catholics. You you you're when we say that you know like that courtship catholic courtship is that you know it should be two catholics courting each other and that mixed marriages shouldn't be an option but but realistically realistically neither you know like not that you can't have non-catholic friends but you should want to have catholic friends you you should i mean being friends with people who aren't catholic should be kind of tiring in a sense i mean again you don't have a lot of the same stuff in common and usually to maintain a friendship with somebody in that in that position you're gonna have to sacrifice and sometimes compromise on things that you really probably shouldn't feel comfortable compromising on you know it's just or even at the very least it's just going to be tiresome you know they use more vulgarity and they you know watch movies that you wouldn't just not going to watch and they talk about things that you just don't talk about and and it's like you know at the very least it's tiresome and then sometimes it's going to be you're either going to have to stand up to them or or you know uh cower away from them and that's not good either and so having traditional catholics that you can be friends with i think that's you want your social circle to be you know, based faith-based it's you know we need with this we the church is a society and it is something that um is strongest when we're together and so that aspect of it that you know not only for yourself that you can make good friends but on the other side of it you could be the friend for somebody that's there too and um and then yeah in if you have any mindset towards courtship i mean what the heck like where where are you going to go that you're going to have a better chance of finding a, pr- a prospect for courtship if that is if you are ready for courtship uh then going to a place where it is just a huge number of single traditional catholics i mean th- these are the walking in the door you know two things about that person already they are of the same faith as you and take their faith seriously enough to actually go to a catholic you know uh young adult get together where you're spending three days you know basically at a giant church function you know and two so you know that they're of the same faith as you and you know that they are single like those two things are clear apparent now you could walk in there and you know maybe you you know maybe you don't find the right person that's okay but at least you have a much better opportunity than sitting at your little mission where there's 20 people that show up to mass and most of them are you know already spoken for then you know it's going to be a much better uh, chances of that if you are ready for courtship and when you come I oftentimes said this, that, you know, especially for the guys, you know, have a little bit of intestinal fortitude to have a little bit of courage about talking to people when you're there, because honestly, if you walk in and you have a little bit of confidence in yourself and just, you know, be put yourself out there to, to talk and to, to just mingle with people, you will definitely make friends and, and you will open up the the real possibility of of um, of wa- of walking away with potential people that you might marry someday. You know, that's I, I made the joke one time that you know if any if some, if a guy walks in here with a little bit of courage and a little bit of ability to not trip over his tongue, he can walk it away with a rolodex of numbers. You know, and it's <laughs> um, you know, and that's you know and that's true i mean if you if you come in there with a drive like and say that i have my own car um, i live i have my own place of living and i have this occupation and like you'll have like like trad ladies like wow you know like i also pray the rosary ladies you know and it's like yeah i mean you 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 know you could be a guy that got beaten by the ugly stick and he he could you got a fighting chance in those and with that with that sort of background and you know just have a little confidence and uh, and you know you you can uh, 
you know, be surprised that, you know, people, people are really there to, ta to, to have a good time and to meet people and to, to get to know people. And you just never know uh, who you might come across. And again, how are you going to know if you, you know, how are you going to find a true Catholic spouse if you're not willing to go to the largest gathering of young Catholic singles around? You know, and like it's sort of like, it's sort of like God sends you the boat in the middle of a of a of a, of a hurricane of, of of a flood, and you don't get into it because you think He's going to just miraculously save you. You know, it's like use your common sense use your prudence you know like hey this is this is the giant uh this is the giant gathering and yeah i may or may not find somebody there and that's okay regardless either way but uh, you know i at least increase my odds you know if 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 i told you that, that you know that i'm going to dump out of a dump truck 500 lottery tickets one of them is a winner if you don't jump into the pile, you aren't going to find it unless it, the wind picks right. up and blows it into your hands. So, so you know, you might as well give it a shot and, and just come. And like I said, the worst thing you do is you spend three days having a really good time in, a, in a, you know, doing all sorts of fun activities, getting to know people, and you and you have, a, you know, new friends that you appreciate. And so what's, what's so bad about that? Awesome. I appreciate it, and, Father. And we got bowling. I mean, come on. Bowling, food, uh, volleyball, all, all sorts of fun stuff. I, 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 I'm not in that scene anymore. But, but if I was, I, I would definitely be there. And I recommend it myself. Um, go check it out. Um, I, I believe the website is yaginsinci.org. I think I should have looked that's that up not, before. Yeah, I, but, I probably should have too. <laughs> Yag and Cincy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up right now, folks. This is, this is real time. Oh it's no, that seven, didn't do it. it it's the seventh to the ninth of July, and um, you know, and as is traditional, you know, the sign up has been slow, and that's always been that way every year. So those of you who know that you're coming, please just sign up, you know, um, because we like to have uh, as accurate of a head count as, as possible. If you're if you're pretty sure you're coming, just 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 sign up and just and uh, so you so we know you're there. This, you know, we're not limited on numbers or anything that we can we can always scale whatever we have to do. But we have to kind of have an idea. Not everybody can sign up at the last moment. So, but something better might come up, Father. <laughs> what would that be? <laughs> I don't know, Father, but something better. You know, maybe uh, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I got I got nothing. What what could be better than than the Yag in Cincy? And it is yaginsincy.org for anyone who wants to check it out. I will. I'll try to remember to put that link in the show notes as well. Father McKenna, as always, it is a pleasure and it has been to talk to you about this topic. We hope to again have you on again to talk about the morality of, of courtship because we didn't really get to that. Um, sure. And it, obviously, that's an extremely important one for those who are interested in courtship, of course. And then we also want to talk about um, the, the issues with uh, friend zoning it, I suppose. And um, hopefully we'll get you on again soon to talk about those two things until then. And also to continue our philosophy uh, series, which I know some people really, really love and have asked me for more. So we'll have to get back to that as well. I know Father is still with us, but he is a busy man, as all the priests are. But um, we hope to get back to that soon as well. Father, thank you so much. Until next time, God bless you. God bless you too.